Oh man. What's up YouTube world? Okay. <clears throat> man, I'm tired. As usual. Check this out, man. You know I'm not even gonna use it for no excuse. I'm gonna get right into this. Okay. It's a lot of people. A lot of people keep asking me, you know what I'm saying, in the comments or just through very different ways about um certain things that they had you know they had heard on the internet, you know, versus uh like black and Mexican relations in Southern California, because now a lot of cause lately you got this clown Charleston White. <clears throat> he been on the internet just going crazy. You know what I'm saying? Disrespecting uh, Mexicans and talking about them and, you know, say, saying this and saying that, doing this and doing that. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I had already made one, you know, letting people know that um, what what Charles and White is saying does not reflect on how most of blacks feel in the United States. Well, I'm going to just say in L.A. I can't speak around the United States because I don't know. <clears throat> but I can speak about L.A. I'm born and raised there. You know what I'm saying? That's just his mess. He way in Texas. You know what I'm saying? Started a bunch of mess that could resonate all over the country. I hope they go get him. Me, me personally. But uh, uh, it, but then again, shoot. The way he talked about us, we should have been got him. With our water down behind. Shoot. We should, we should have been did something to him. But anyway, that's on him. But now, due to, due to how he's been speaking and the stern the stuff he been saying a lot of a lot of people been asking me a lot of questions not just not just what he been saying but certain like uh hispanic podcasts uh around the country you know certain stuff that they heard on there and you know they just they going to hear stuff people going to hear stuff people going to talk about stuff they going to hear stuff so like you know what i'm saying i'm 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 you know i'm up and coming you know what i'm saying rising rising through the ranks you know fairly fast you know so a lot of people have been asking me, well, you know, what do I feel? And they asking me this because me being a street dude from the street, from the hood, you know what I'm saying, banging into South Central LA all my life, um, <clears throat> did doing time in a lot of different prisons in different states, you know what I'm saying? They know I've been there, done that. I've, I've been through the ringer on whatever, whatever. And you know what I'm saying? I got a lot of history, knowledge, and know about on, you know, that certain, that certain subject right there. And I do. So they've been asking me, and I had been ducking it. I've been ducking it. I didn't really want to answer it. I didn't really want to talk about it. <clears throat> I didn't really want to go there because, you know, some people, most people, no, I'm say some people, they don't know how to look beyond the veil and see the the see the truth in the in the message. Some people want to look at the messenger and disregard the message. Some people just totally, because of the topic, do not want to take the message in, chew on it, swallow it digest it and think about it and you know take it for what it is get the goodness up out of it they want to try to pull the negative out of it and and make it make it something that that is not you know um uh, me personally i ain't got no problem with nobody me personally i don't have no problems with nobody but now did i have problems in the past yeah i'm not gonna sit here and lie yeah you know i'm a i'm a product of my environment you know i come up in south central LA and i'm a i'm, I'm state raised you know, anybody that was state raised from back when I was coming to the state prison said state raised, for those who don't know me, a person who was raised by the state in prison, did a lot of wide time, did a lot of prison time. So that they, they, that's called state raised. OK, so, you know, and anybody, anybody, uh, you know, what I'm saying in the, in the, that was state raised predominantly in the 80s, you know, what I'm saying they're going to have they're going to have a certain type mindset when it comes to that topic, you know, what I'm saying versus because of what they've been through. You know what I'm saying, and anybody who was that that was in it to win it, been through it. They go, they've been through the race rides, they've been through the uh, racial fights, they've been through the you know racial epitaphs thrown back and forth, and you know even on the streets, been through whatever they've been through. You know what I'm saying, as far as race relations between blacks and Hispanics have gone. Um, it's it, you know no matter you can sugarcoat it, you can paint, you can put try to like the boys say, put paint where it ain't. You know what I'm saying? You can put a you can put a, a wig on a pig, but at the end of the day it's still gonna be a pig, you know. So there there is no trying to make it, you know, talk if you're gonna talk about this subject, soften it up, easing it up, because it got some sharp edges to it. You know what I'm saying? That could potentially 
you know, step on people's toes, whether they black or brown. And um, it, it is what it is. But so that's was that's the reason why I had been ducking the 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 subject, the topic, because the truth is the truth, and the truth hurts, and a lot of people don't want to hear the truth, because sometimes the truth, well, a lot of times the truth is gonna paint either this race or this race or this person, this person in a bad light. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> and a lot of people can't accept it because their mind ain't developed enough to say, well, you know what? Yeah, that's true. That's right. That's true. That's right. <clears throat> but now, with me being a YouTuber, when my people keep asking me for something, asking me for something, then I have no choice but to give it to them and um, let the chips fall where they may, you know? But um, what they had been asking me about, a lot of people know that, um, you know, black and brown relations in Southern California are a lot different than in Northern California or a lot different than in other states. You know, I mean, you know, to be stomped down brutally, just, you know, take the take the pretty rappings off of it. You know, at one time, you know, you know, pretty much, you know, blacks and Mexicans didn't get along in LA. You know, it was it was it was a problem. You know, sir, you know, certain little areas was cool, was cool, but you know, as time went on, predominantly the race relations got real bad. You know what I'm saying? I remember because I come up in an era where the majority, I'm going to say, you know, matter of fact, all, South Central L.A. was was, predominant, was all black. Wasn't no whites unless they were the police or the firemen or school teachers or something. You know, you had a, you had a handful of Mexicans here, there, here, there, here, there. But I'm speaking on in the 70s, you know, growing up in the 70s, coming on into, you know, the early 80s or whatever. If you know schools that I went to when I was coming up, school you know junior elementary schools, junior highs, high schools that I went to when I was coming up was was nine was ninety eight, but well, I'm gonna say it was ninety five percent black. That's it, and you know five percent Mexican. Um, and that's what I was used to. That's all I knew. <clears throat> so. As time, but now, you know, as time went on, time went on, it started changing. It started changing, started changing. And um, when it started changing, uh, it was one, one I think, uh, now, you know, I'm going to say his name. If, you know, if if I'm wrong for saying your name, partner, please forgive me. But uh, I, was, I seen we're on a, one of the podcasts with, uh, with, with Dubs. He was uh, somebody had asked him something about race relations between black and brown, and he was and he had said something about well a lot of times, like the reason why Hispanics feel the way they feel today is because th they are the kids and the grandkids of the Mexican immigrants that were coming to L.A. and they said you know he was saying something about he had to sit around and that you know people no not him but well you know the, the Mexicans now of today had to sit around and watch. They parents get jumped on by us, <clears throat> by blacks, um, get socked out, you know what I'm saying, you know, just get getting robbed, just getting done bad, you know what I'm saying, and they were just these hardworking people, and they were just getting done bad. And you know what, when I heard it, you know, I, I can agree, I said, yeah, you because I remember how it was when I was 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, coming up, you know what I'm saying, and um, the the Mexicans in L.A., you know, yeah, they, they was, was kind of in South Central, first off, in South Central was kind of getting done bad because, you know, they were new. They weren't there. You know, they were coming into black neighborhoods. They were moving into black neighborhoods. And, um, you know, kids, you know, they, they kind of, you know, they, you know, got punched on and socked out and, and robbed. That, that, that I will admit that that was happening. So, um, so he was saying that, the, the you know, the, the, their kids from back then have grown up with hate in their heart toward us behind that well you know toward blacks behind that so that's what come their thoughts and mentality and attitude grew up the way it is and the way it was you know okay but um and that was messed up that was messed up but now on the <clears throat> it's a flip side to that too though it's a flip side to that because you know blacks back then looked at it as they were being invaded you know what I'm saying? They were being invaded. They were, um, they were just being invaded. You know, like, dang, you know, where, where, where are these people coming from? You know, <clears throat> and what had happened was, it was like a swarm of locusts. When they would move in, one would move on the block, and next thing you know, by the end of the year, or by the end of two years, 
you know, every house on the block was 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 Hispanic, was Mexican. And so back, you know, way back then, a lot of blacks, you know, were mad about that. You know what I'm saying? Dang. You know, just like, you know, the schools that I went to that were all, you know, basically almost 100% black, as years went by, as years went on by the 90s, by the, by the 90s, homie, you know, <clears throat> it, they were all, dang, it was like uh, 75% Hispanic and 25% black. So, you know, you know, you know, a lot of blacks had, you know, feelings about that. You know, man, you know, because like I say, they felt like they were being, you know, they, they neighborhoods were being taken over. They were being invaded. And basically, that's what it was. They neighborhoods got took, you know, the black neighborhoods got took over. It got flipped from black neighborhoods to Hispanic neighborhoods. Uh, all the schools got flipped over and took over. They got flipped from uh, black schools to Hispanic schools. Uh, if you look, you remember... All through the 90s, it was a lot of fights, a lot of rides at a lot of the high schools. And that was the process of the takeover. Blacks and Mexicans were fighting all the time. I mean, girls, boys, all that. In junior high schools, in high schools, it was always scuffles and fights, scuffles and fights. You know what I'm saying? The Mexicans were fighting because they felt that it was their turn. It was their time. You know what I'm saying? The area and the neighborhoods or whatever were theirs. And the blacks were fighting because they were mad that they felt like um, the areas were being invaded by foreigners, you know. So it was just it was just problems, problems. But now, till at the end, I mean, toward the end, blacks were pretty much fighting a losing battle because you know I was in prison, but you know I would hear stuff, get stories, and um, you know, read you know newspapers and stuff how you know South Central LA had went from 98% black to now it's like 65% Hispanic. So, you know, anybody is going to feel a certain type of way. You know what I'm saying? Anybody. You know, if they say they won't or they say they don't, they're lying. If they see what they, what they felt was theirs, even though none of that belongs to the blacks, none of it belongs to the Hispanics, but still in all, in in your mind, in a, in a in a you know in a mind in a ghetto mindset, you know that little piece of turf, those little piece you know bitty streets that you grew up on, they're yours. So anywhere, anybody's gonna feel that way if they feel you know they're under siege or they're being besieged or they feel um, what they what they felt was theirs is being taken and ran over from others. So, you know, it was a problem. It was an ongoing problem, ongoing problem, ongoing problem. Now, don't get me wrong. You know, Mexicans were in South Central from the beginning. It's just, it just wasn't a lot of them. It, it just wasn't a lot of them. You know what I'm saying? And um, the few that was there, it, you know, they, they, they were just, you know, in the cut. They was cool. So, and then it just became a problem. But, like he was saying about seeing uh, the older generation of Hispanics getting robbed, getting punched on and beat up and stuff. Okay, that was in that was in South Central a lot. You know what I'm saying? Where a lot of people felt, now a lot of people, not saying me, but a lot of different blacks felt they shouldn't have been there anyway. They ain't had no business coming there in mass like that anyway. They felt like if they stayed where they were at, they wouldn't have had to worry about it. That's what I, you know, I get that type of feedback from a lot of different blacks. But anyway, it's a flip side to that because, you know, you can speak on how blacks did Hispanics in South Central, but people ain't speaking on how Hispanics did blacks in East L.A. in different parts of the valley. You know what I'm saying? That, that, that same thing went on. Blacks, blacks wasn't welcome in East L.A. like that, Whittier and all that. No, blacks wasn't welcomed in a lot of certain parts of the valley in certain different areas other than South Central, Compton and Watts. Blacks wasn't welcome like that in Hispanic areas and neighborhoods back then, but that's not being spoke on. Blacks couldn't just run around in East L.A. the way they wanted to. No, it was going to be a problem off the rip. But now ain't nobody speaking on that. You know what I'm saying? Um. You couldn't take a black family and move them to the V and E projects. No, they was going the, the house would get burned up, beat up, and shot up, which is documented facts that happened. Uh, in the Dogtown projects, in a lot of different uh, projects in East LA, Bowling Park, Echo Park. You know what I'm saying? A lot, a lot of 
you know, predominantly Hispanic areas, blacks weren't able to move into those areas. Blacks were not allowed or wanted in them areas, not by the whites, but by the, by, but by the Mexicans. They would get ran out, beat up, shot up or whatever. So, you know, it's a two edged sword. So it ain't it, it ain't just that, you know, blacks in South Central was jumping on the Mexicans that came to South Central. No, blacks would get jumped on in East L.A. and other places, too. You know what I'm saying? Especially like like Orange County. I can give you a story. You know, uh, my first time coming through, we knew people knew about how coming through Orange County. Now, this is way back in the 80s. You know what I'm saying? Because the, the hate was prevalent going both ways. The hate was prevalent coming from the blacks. The hate was prevalent coming from the Mexicans. You know what I'm saying? It was just both ways. There ain't no, there, there's no um, fingers to be pointed to say one race is worse than the next or one race did worse than, than the other. It was just like that. You know what I'm saying? When I, I came through Orange County Jail back in the, back in the 80s and um, blacks only had two blocks that they can live in. And if I can remember, it was like on C-16 on, on the second tier Cell four and five. It was five cells on the tier. One, two, three was whites and Mexicans. Then four and five were blacks. Then all five cells at the bottom were were or were, were whites. No, I think just predominantly Hispanic. Or it might have been some whites mixed in too. But yet we couldn't even come out and go eat together. They would have to go eat and come back. Then the two little cells we had in the back were, you know, we could go eat. But even still, when we come in, the, the kitchen workers were all Mexicans. And um, in the kitchen. So when we would come through, the two black uh, pods would come through. You know what we used to hear? Uh, Lakers walking, Lakers walking, Africans on the move, Africans on the move. And as you walking by, you looking at all the all the people that sitting down, looking at their trays full and overflowing with food. But now when we got to the window, the portions got real short, real short. You know what I'm saying? It got real short, homie. So I'm like, you know, I dang, they, you know, my first time in there, with me coming from where I'm coming from, my understanding about that was zero. So, I, you know, I went for it the first couple of days. So I'm asking the dudes in the pod, I'm like, what's up with this? Oh, man, that's how they treat us here, man. That's how they do it. So I ain't going to lie. I'm like, what, y'all go for this? This this, this what y'all, you know, this is what y'all going for? What are we supposed to do? Man, we finna take off. I mean, you know, that's how my, my mentality was. So we went when we went to the kitchen on that third or fourth day, I had everybody run up in the back of the kitchen because when you're going out the door, the, the, the kitchen door where the, where the workers are is open. So I told them, I said, cuz, we finna run back in there and take off, homie. We ain't, you know, we ain't finna keep going for this. And that's what we did. But I'm saying that to say that, that the, the hate was wild like that, going both ways. So, you know, it just ain't, it just didn't come from that. And we did not go, blacks did not go to East LA and, 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 and we there, and like I say, all these other places in mass, trying to move in, trying to take over, trying to take over schools, or none of that. You know what I'm saying? The blacks stayed where they was at. Now, I'm not saying that's how it should be, or I'm not saying that people have to have boundaries, but we just, we did not go to where they were at trying to take over like that. And the few blacks that did go, they got done real bad. So then turn, but now turn around when the Mexican came and tried to move into where the blacks were. When they got done bad, oh, the world was coming to an end. So, you know, hey, it ain't cool. It man, the whole the whole situation ain't cool going both ways. It ain't cool coming from them. It wasn't cool coming from us. You know, then you got the then, then here it is. Now you in the prison world. You know, the two dominant groups, Southern Mexicans and blacks, all through the 60s, 70s, and 80s, boom, you know, blacks and Southern Mexicans. Um, the, I, the reason why I don't say the Northern Mexicans is because they've always been cool with blacks. You know, when I was when I was coming through the system, um, we had, like I say, um, I, I seen another Hispanic podcast say there's a loose alliance with the blacks and the Northerners. Well, when I was coming through the system... The alliance wasn't loose. It was tight to the point to where if the Northerners got into a ride with the Southerners, a lot of time we rode. I mean, I'm a, when I say we, I'm speaking on the Crips. We rode with them, you know what I'm saying? And and we kicked it with them. You know, they, you know, 
We 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 supported each other. We you know traded border. You know what I'm saying? Gave weapons and stuff back and forth, and it was it was all good. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna lie. You know me personally, I had major love for the Northern Corps. I, I, I mean, that, them was the homies. I had major love for them. When I say major love, they was my homeboys. And you know it it been I ain't gonna even lie. It been plenty of times if um if a Northern got rushed and he was by himself, or if I was standing there, man, I I helped him. I took off. You know what I'm saying? Um, or if they was finna get out and, and, I, and I heard about it earlier and then, you know, it was a point to where we can go when we was going to go. It was just like that. Anybody who was in CDC and got a C number or an early D number like D123, something like that, they know how it was. That's just how the prison politics was. We had a very strong alliance with the 14, with the Nuestra de la Familia. We, you know, we had it with them, especially the Crips. But um, in the prison system, you know, race relations got real bad. You know, real, real bad. Um, I can sit here and tell you about different rides, different, just different, different things that happened between you know blacks and southern Mexicans. Um, as far as okay, now the southern Mexicans were smart. They would get into it with the BGF. They've been beefing since the seventies. Tough. They would get into it with uh, dudes out of up north, out of Oakland. They would get into it with the Bloods and different things like that. And But they were smart enough to always come to us and say, look, well, we don't have a problem with y'all. When I say we, as, I mean y'all as in Crips, the Crips. And they were like, this ain't, you know, they would always, this is not to y'all. This ain't got nothing to do with y'all. We ain't directing this to y'all. We ain't, you know, boom, 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 boom. It was always to make sure that the Crips never came involved because we were a very strong entity back then, very strong car. And they were smart enough. They I wanted, they were smart enough. They were smart enough to divide us and put in our minds, well, it ain't us. They getting at them. It ain't us. They getting at them. You know what I'm saying? And the whole time, you know, we was we were thinking wrong. Whereas it should have been a black thing versus a thing, them, them, or them, because that's how they get down too. You know, if a group of people, you couldn't get into it with the with the essays out of uh, Whittier and tell the rest of the essays, oh well, this, you know, um, well, this ain't got nothing to do with y'all. It's just them out of no. It don't work like that, you know. But we let them divide us that way. And as time went on, though, you know, blacks finally woke up and like, you know, they jumped on it like boom. But that didn't happen till after. It was inevitable for the Serenios and the Crips to clash. Boom! And like the big clash like in 84 in Old Folsom, you know, that was, that you know, that was pretty much, that was, that was, that was, that was, that was a thing there. That resonated all over the system and um, after that it was pretty much on, you know, it pretty much on after that. But, um, so, you know, you, you got a lot of people, if they in a certain age group and they came up in the prison system during them times they have, you know, they have their biases and they have their certain feelings because you can't live in that savage type of environment for 10, 12, well, I'm going to say 5, 6, 10, 12, 15, 20 years going through this warfare, this constant warfare with a certain group of people every day and not develop a certain, a certain mentality about those people. It's just impossible. Now, once you get out and you get, and you get that poison out your system, you can start thinking and, you know, seeing things a different way. But why you in there? No, it's called survival. You're not going to see it no different way. And pre you pretty much, you don't want to see it a different way. You feel what I'm saying? And even when you first get out, it, that type of hate just doesn't go away overnight. And some people never lose that hate. Some people just, you know, have, you know, they've been, you know, they've been through so much behind them walls that, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> they embrace their hate and they, and they run with it. You know, to each his own. Um, but yeah, it's and then like you, things are changing in LA. You know, the race relations they're changing. That I, I can say, yeah, they getting better. Like for instance, like you see how the uh, the East Coasters have. You know, they they you know they got peace with the F-13s now. You know, that was a big step. That was a big step toward killing a lot of um, you know, hate, racial hate. Um, a lot of the, you know, the sets, you know, the, the Crips in Compton, the Crips and Bloods in Compton start getting along with a lot of the uh, the S.A. Varios in Compton. That was a big, that was a big step. Um, has it totally went away? No. 
No, not not by far. Will it will it ever totally go away? I don't know. Um, it's 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 kind of funny now. I mean, it's kind of weird now because, like I say, black steel can't just go to East LA and live. You know what I'm saying? Right to this day, to this very moment, I'm talking to you now. No, they're going to be targeted. They're going to be messed with. They still can't go to a lot of uh, Hispanic projects in East L.A. and just move in. You know what I'm saying? It's documented facts still right to this day, in this day and age. You know, women, black, you know, black women trying to move into certain areas with their kids so they can raise them. You know what I'm saying? Get their house shot up, get ran off, get talk, you know, boom. And so um, it's just bad. So then you like you have certain stuff like uh like the boy uh you know they mad at they mad at Tiger about that song I Caramba you know a hey, it was a stupid song to me you know what I'm saying but can I see them can I see them um feeling some type of way about it yeah I could I mean I could I could you know but like on the same way like right now today right now as I'm talking to you in LA, uh, I'm not sure.